Good evening. Welcome to the January 4th, 2016 meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Could we have the roll call, please? Council Chair McCausley? Here. Councilor Garvin? Here. Councilor Grennan? Here. Councilor Jordan? Here. Councilor Lennon? Here. Councilor Ray? Here. And Councilor Sullivan? Here. Thank you. And will you all join me for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have any town council reports and correspondence tonight? Yes. I just wanted to report that the ordinance committee will be meeting, our next meeting is January 19th at 1.30 at noon. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. I'd like to report that the appointments committee um, asked that the council, as well as all members of um, the town boards and commissions, mark their calendar for Thursday, January 28th. We are going to hold an orientation for all these um, members. and. The first, we're doing a little differently this year. The first half an hour of the meeting will be focused on just some kind of social time, We a time for all of us to gather, as well as some networking, and at the same time, a thank you to all those who volunteer. And then the next hour will be uh, focused on training, uh, what we hope to be a riveting training, uh, which will um, train people on effective and efficient leadership um, on our town boards for the coming year. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? No? Thank you. Could we have the Finance Committee report? We don't have one. Oh. Do we have something, I think, Mike, that you sent out today? Give Elizabeth Finances, December 31st? We did get a report today. Yeah, late, late wanna, this afternoon. Did yeah. you want to speak to that? Yeah, it, it, the financial report for this month obviously was later because this was the first work day after right. the the end of the uh, fiscal year, but, you know, the, the numbers look good. I, I think, you know, one, one piece you look at is, you know, how are people feeling about the economy? And for us, one of the indicators is, is excise taxes, because if excise tax income is up, it shows people are buying new cars, and maybe there's a few new homes that people are looking at it. And for the first six months of the year, our, our income from excise tax, motor vehicle excise taxes, was up 7.7%, uh, which, which adds up to a little over almost $76,000. So. Uh, you know, that, that's a very positive indicator. Uh, revenue sharing, you know, after the uh, state attempts to cut it back is, is holding in there. Uh, we, we're, we're meeting the budget and, and then some, although we expect to hit the budget exactly by the end of the, the year. Uh, sewer fees, I, I don't know what, what economic indicator that is, it's based on flow. Uh, those are up 6%. Uh, you know, the rates had gone up about 2%, so some of that, some of that is a rate increase. And, and gift shop sales in Portland Headlight uh, are, uh, for the first six months, were up 12.4 percent. And you know, if you're feeling good about the economy, you, you buy the jewelry, you buy the uh, the sweatshirts, and the you know everything, t-shirts, everything else people buy at the gift shop. So that so that's all good. Uh, on the on the expense side, you know, things are pretty much uh, you know as, as planned. Obviously, the winter has been light. Uh, we have had some uh, equipment challenges with vehicle maintenance, and we're a little worried about that account, but we're hoping, we always hope this time of year that the snow isn't as bad in the end, but as Bob would tell me, well, I'll tell you, in, used to say in April, but now he's going to start saying May after last year. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, th things overall look, look pretty good. Uh, we're, we're in good shape. Wonderful. Those public works numbers look significantly better this year than they did last year. No guarantees. Right. Okay, thank you. Next up, citizen opportunity for discussion of items not on the agenda tonight. Did anyone want to speak? No? Okay. We'll move on to the town manager's monthly report. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair Molly. I, uh, I gotta get used to that. Chair McCausen. Uh I think the, the main thing I wanted to talk about this evening is, is the uh, two, two things. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate Ed Hunt. Uh, Ed uh, is, is the clerk at our uh, uh, public safety building, police station. And on December 31st, he marked his 42nd year 
as a full-time employee of the town. He's the longest serving municipal employee we've ever had. Uh, for a long time, he was the head dispatcher when we consolidated dispatching uh, into Portland. Uh, he became the, the chief clerk, took a pay cut. Uh, but I say he was okay with that, but he understood that was part of the deal. And you know, he's been with us you know, all these years since he switched over, but uh, we're really pleased to have him. He does a great job, and uh, anyone that's worked with Ed knows his dedication and uh, just, a, just a good person. Secondly, I, I did want to mention that uh, Jay Sharma, our librarian, is retiring on uh, January 22nd, and uh, we're, the department heads are having a little lunch in front of tomorrow, and I know the trustees are planning to a dinner with them, and uh, the staff's you know, doing other odds and things. And you know, we, we all appreciate it. He's been our librarian for 20 years. Uh, he's done a great job of late uh, working in a very difficult library uh, uh, plant, uh, both with, with the old building as it was, and now the, particularly this year with, with uh, very limited uh, library physical uh, uh, plant. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's, it's you know, not the greatest situation over there. But uh, the library closed on Saturday. Uh, the uh, the old library and uh, the new one's going to be opening February 4th and uh, Jay uh, won't be working anymore when when it opens but you know he can have the full pride of knowing that he worked with a great building committee and uh, citizens who were supportive of it uh, people who gave a lot of money to help furnishings I think you know he feels a tremendous responsibility for uh, you know helping guide it along and move it along and I think he He's done a great job, as well as you know, he's done a great job at the library over the years, and particularly with, with uh, you know, he, he's worked with a a Freedom of Information Coalition or something. I don't know the exact name of it, but he, he's really done a lot of work to make sure that libraries are, are fully accessible to the public, and that you know, public information is available, and you know, has, has just done a tremendous job with that. I think the second thing he's really done is move the the state, even not just locally, but statewide, he, he was really one of the founders of the effort to do all of the online uh, cataloging that we have through a system called Minerva and to get all the local libraries involved. And I think he was head of the State Library Association at the time that helped him launch. So he'll be missed. He's done a great job. And uh, you know, I would usually say, drop in and say hello to him, but the library's closed. But, uh, we still are open for interlibrary loan, I don't know, three to five, mm -hmm. I think, I'm not sure the exact hours, uh, every day for those that want to do that. But the library's coming along. Uh, if, you look in, if you look in the, the main doorway, uh, it doesn't look done and it's not, uh, but they started putting up the shelving today, and you know, that's a good sign. The furnishings are coming in uh, relatively soon, uh, and you know, we, we're now you know, into issues discussing the, the window treatments and where where the this I don't know <laughs> where certain things right. are sort of in the way so it's it's coming along and it's great so that's uh, everything's going good and we we hope for a light winter and uh, Bob promises even more than the weather guys that uh, all's going to turn out fine can we hold as he rolls his eyes right <laughs> so thank you happy new year. Thank you. Um, two things I'd follow up with. One, I would concur with the manager's comments about Jay Sharma. It's been a pleasure having him as our community librarian, but also working with him as a member of the library planning and building committees. He did an outstanding job. We'll miss him. Thank you, Jay, if you're watching. Um, secondly, I wanted to point out that the December 4th edition of the Forecaster had a very nice article in it. I mentioned this to Mike. I think he said, oh, don't mention it, but I will anyway. I thought it was really terrific. There was a nice story about our own town manager who thinks and acts globally and locally. And if you would just bear with me for one minute, I would like to point out, as the article says, he's been involved with Rotary since 1986 been the chairman of Rotary International Polio Plus program for the past year. I wanted to mention that because I thought it was so interesting. 30 years ago when the Polio Plus program was created, there were 350,000 cases of polio worldwide. Now there are only 60. I think that is a tremendous accomplishment, great progress. Um, 
our town manager is making a real difference in the world, both locally and globally. Thank you. And with that, do I have a motion for the review of the draft minutes of December 14th? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Jessica. Any discussion, comments, changes? No? All in favor? That passes unanimously. <coughs> Thank you. And we will move on to the public hearing. Before we open that public hearing, um, Jessica, as the chair of the committee, would you like to say a few words or do you have anything you'd like to say to introduce the item before we start the public hearing? Sure. Thank you. Uh -huh. I'd be very happy to. Um, I'd like to welcome the committee members who are all here tonight, Chuck Wilson, and Swift Kayata, Bill Brownell, former committee member like myself, Jamie Garvin, now Newtown Counselor, and uh, our Public Works Director, Bob Malley, and Woodard and Curran engineers, Randy Tome and Megan McDevitt. You're all here tonight. So thanks for coming. Um, we've had the Town Council workshop on this. So here we are at the public hearing. It's very, very exciting, I think. Again, the recommendations that the committee um, has come up with will be are proposed and to, uh, to save the town over $13,000 annually um, given the required repairs that would need to be made. So as this is a long-term plan that is extremely economical and efficient and will uh, be a tremendous improvement in safety and service for our citizens. So this is a wonderful work that the committee did. Thank you. And with that, I will open the public hearing on the report of the Solid Waste and Recycling Long Range Planning Committee. Is there anyone who would like to speak? Seeing that there is no one, I will, yeah, oh, is sorry, come right up. Can you come, come up to the podium? Thank you. Hi, I'm Carolyn Vitro, and I'm a volunteer at the Swap Shop. And uh, it's a lot of fun, but right, we see things. And one thing I see with all the good work that's been done with signage and changing the traffic pattern, people ignore, some people ignore the signage and make that left turn to go to the bottle shed and the swap. And I, I'm really fearful because even today I saw parents yelling at their kids, don't run out there because cars can't see it. You know, kids don't understand, they can't be seen. So I really worry about the safety of the children. And, uh, it, it, you know, one time I talked to a lady and she said, well, don't be silly. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, you know, I'm sure Mrs. Dennison just thought it was a real riot when that tragedy happened last year. So I, I'm very concerned about traffic. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, my name is Scott Clark. I live on Brentwood. Um, before I say, give my comments, I like this new layout. It's really nice. It's, it's quite welcoming. Um, <clears throat> two comments about the uh, transfer station. Um, I've given these comments before uh, through the surveys that I've filled out and things like that. And I haven't seen anything mentioned about the one. <clears throat> I'm not necessarily a, a, a crazy environmentalist, but I think this year, 2016, is the year that the EPA is now going to start looking at. Uh, last year was looking at state's energy usage, part of the Obama's um, carbon reduction uh, led to the coal restrictions, et cetera, et cetera. This is the year they start looking at municipal uh, carbon footprints and uh, within states, in other words. Uh, and I think that one thing that no one's taken into account, I haven't seen any mention of that, is the fact that uh, the method we have of waste disposal um, in Cape Elizabeth has a huge carbon footprint. I don't think anyone d would deny that. And I think that you can argue <clears throat> multiple sides of that, whether it's important, you know, whether anyone will pay attention, whether we'll ever get any press coverage for that. And I think we will. I think we'll get a big thumbs down. Maybe this year, maybe not till next year, when a town the size of Cape Elizabeth does not have the energy savings from having one or two trucks 
plying the streets versus 6,000 cars going to the transfer station any time. Now, I thought to myself, I'll come up with numbers, but uh, it's tough to do that. It's tough to estimate the total number of gallons uh, that people spend per week going to the dump and back. Uh, and I, I think that there's probably somebody in the town that could do that a lot better than I can, making simple assumptions. But I, I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned that we're going to put a lot of money into continuing with the system that we have now when in two or three years when global warming really becomes an issue and our carbon footprint becomes an issue people are going to raise you know the hand and say capes one of those towns that's very carbon intensive so property values will drop people will move out oh terrible <laughs> <think about it. coughs> uh, the last point about that is an emotional point to me and that's that i've been driving to that transfer station now for 20 something years something like that and i have to say every time i go when i see an 85 year old lady walking over there with her trash it breaks my heart and nothing that's proposed is going to change that i don't mean to point at you guys but i assume you're part of the whatever nothing's going to change that and we're focused on senior issues to me it's an issue i haven't seen said and it may be that those old ladies will say i can do it i can do it but the fact is we're forcing it on them there's no question about that and that's kind of morally wrong to me so anyway that's my comment thank you thank you for your comments anyone else yes <coughs> Tom Schmitz, I volunteer in the swap shop, and I've spoken before at these meetings, and every time this goes on deaf ears or just gets, uh, I don't think it's too much to ask for some plywood behind the shelves. It's so frustrating for the books to fall behind, you can't get them, then they age and they mold, and it's bad for your health to breathe. Uh, another thing is a new piece of plywood for the toy table. Toy table, leans, things roll off it. I don't think this is too much to ask. I'm just asking for plywood and supports for these tables. Now, people that come there thank us. You're doing a great job. Oh, we love it. Um, we've trained a lot of people, put things where they belong. This is a model for the South Portland swap. I've talked to those people. They love our setup. They compliment us. And yet, this is so simple. Some new plywood, please. Thank you. Before you step away, could you just tell us your name and your address? Again, we didn't catch it. Joan Schmitz. Thank you. 10 Sweet Fern Road. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Yeah. <clears throat> no? Yes, step right up. Hi, I'm Carol Law on Macaulay Road and also a member of the Cape Elizabeth Recycling Committee. And I just wanted to speak in support of all of the hard work that went into this report by the engineers and by the committee. And I know that from reports to our committee by Jessica, mm -hmm and Jamie that a lot of issues have been really thoughtfully considered including the carbon footprint issue and town opinion has been taken from the form of surveys and things like that so I think that actually the report has an excellent plan I think there are some things that could be worked on like maybe some of the traffic patterns and some things with the swap shop I think there are details that can be improved upon but I just like to speak in favor of the the recommendation thank you yes Please. Good evening. My name is uh, Pete Fry. I'm from 28 Southwell Road in Cape. I'm the current chair of, uh, of our Cape Elizabeth Recycling Committee. 
and uh, I'd like to say thank you to to the board, to the folks, you know, the committee that uh, that, that put so much work into into this study. Uh, thank you for the council for your patience and for the money to you know to explore the uh, the new possible ways to, that we can uh, change our facility. And I want to say that I really really am appreciative of the hard work that they've done. I support it. Uh, so far as the, the uh, carbon footprint, I'd like to echo uh, Kara's sentiments. We certainly talked about curbside pickup in the past, and uh, it just does not met favorably at this time. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but uh, it's certainly something that, that we have looked at. And I, if you look at the plan, there are, there are measures in there to reduce our carbon footprint in that the single stream, the way it's carried now, is, uh, is loose not compacted and part of this plan calls for compacting the single stream so that it will be a much more efficient carriage when it's compacted we'll, we'll have a lot fewer uh, loads to, to take the the, uh, the single stream at least over to over to uh, eco main so I say this there are a lot of efficiencies built in it's it is a good plan uh, it's something needed to be done and I think that they've come up with uh, with a, a really viable solution Given the the current uh, appetite for curbside pickup, I think it's it's a really good plan, and I support it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Going, going, gone. Public hearing is now closed. Thank you for your comments, and we will move on to. Item number 25-2016, the report of the Solid Waste and Recycling Long Range Planning Committee. We've had the public hearing comments. The Town Council will now begin consideration on whether or not to approve the recommendation. We have a paragraph of discussion here in front of us, and then we also have some uh, language for a proposed motion. Um, do I have a motion? Thank you, Jessica. Uh, <coughs> Go ahead a second. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, um, sorry. If, 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 I may, if I may, Chairman yes. Carlson, I'm going to ask the town manager, should I read the entire Whatever you'd like, yeah. motion? Okay. I'll go ahead and do that. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I uh, move to adopt the recommended concept for the recommended improvements of the recycling center property and equipment and to request the town manager to work with bond council and the town attorney to develop a ballot issue for June 2016, providing for the authorization of $1.4 million to implement the concept. Apart from the ballot issue, the bond issue draft motion should include funding of $600,000 to update the humidity and chlorination systems at the Donald Richards Community Pool. The portion of the bond for the recycling center is to be amortized over 20 years and the portion for the pool over 10 years. The town manager is to provide said draft motions for town council consideration at the February 8, 2016 town council meeting. Thank you. Do I have a second? Thank you, Jamie. Any discussion? Yeah, can I? Yeah, Please. I, I just do want to add, you know, there's a new concept <clears throat> in here that doesn't relate to the report of the public area, and that's that we borrow at the same time, we're borrowing for the, the recycling center some funds to update the humidity and chlorination system. That is an item that you're going to be looking at more on uh, uh, at your workshop later this week. So, you know, I, I'm comfortable with this as drafted, mm -hmm. uh, but I do understand that, you know, following the workshop, you might, particularly on that issue, you know, all you're doing here is, I think you're doing several important things. You're, you're approving the concept. Mm -hmm of the recycling center. Uh, you're deciding really when the vote is going to be June. You're deciding the, what the budget is for that. And you know, that's explained in, in the text in the report. And, and, then the, and then beside that is this, is this humidity and chlorination system. But you know, you know, if you have cold feet at, at all on that, or you want to look at something else, uh, you know, we'll have more information between now and when you need to vote on this. Uh, February 8th. The mm -hmm. other thing is we did have a meeting today with uh, Meredith and the school board chair specifically you know about various different issues with the council chair 
And you know, we, there's a real desire, because the, the system is failing, to have an engineer look at different options, uh, over the, particularly beginning over the next month. And there was $20,000 that was already included in the, the municipal budget to do that. So the, the plan would be on that is we would have, uh, you know, I'd, I'd speak with Meredith tomorrow since that's now currently under the school department and, and get kick-started doing the engineering study, looking at different options that, that have come forward for different suggestions on, on what to look at. So, you know, so I, my point is, is I think it's really important, the part of the motion for the refuse disposal, you really setting direction. Uh, but you are going to have another chance, particularly, to look at this humidity and chlorination system yeah. even before uh, your February 8th meeting. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Any questions for the manager? Yeah, I just yes. have a follow-up question to that. So just to be clear, we, um, because it's over a million dollars, the 1.4 for the facility needs to go out to a vote. Certainly the 600000 if we were to just not, so it would not although, vote although you'd be bonding together, it would only be one item that's going yeah, to we'd, we'd be we'd be borrowing the money at the same time, mm -hmm. but the, the monies for the the recycling center would have to be approved by the voters. Mon anything under a million dollars is not a, does not go to the voters if it's a separate project, which, okay. which it is. It's just it saves us money to borrow at the same time, uh, because the you know the bond council and all those different costs. Okay. Financial advisor. Yes, Kathy. Thank you, Sarah Hedder. Oh, yes. sorry. Okay, go ahead. Um, I think we should take the 600000 out of the motion um, because it's unrelated uh, to the recycling center. And I find it a little odd that it's together. I understand that it has to be potentially borrowed together, but I think we should take it out um, in terms of separate, separating them because they're separate issues. But that's just my opinion, and I'll go with whatever everyone wants. Yes. Yeah. You know, I have no concern with that. You know, the purpose of putting it here was really to give fair notice to the council and to the public that this might be part of your vote next month. So, but taking it out would not. You know, we're still providing the notice that we're thinking about it, even if it's not formally in the motion. Yeah. I mean, you could do a separate motion. So, would you like to? I'm sorry. Does that need to go back to Jessica to revise her motion? Um. My motion was seconded. Uh, I'm not if sure what I both agree to. Right. Revise. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll go along with whatever every, everybody wants. I just think they're two separate issues. I understand they're going to be bonded together, but they're two separate issues, and I don't want it to be confused for right. people who might have an issue with one or the other. Mm -hmm. and anyone could move to strike any language from the proposed motion. Okay. Yes. Okay. I then move to amend my original motion, striking the language regarding the Donald Richards Community Pool funding for $600,000. And do I need a second? Sure. Thank you. And do we have any discussion of that motion? Do we need to vote on that motion? Before? On the amendment. On the amendment. So we're voting just on whether to Strike accept the amendment. Any discussion before we have that vote? No? So now we are voting on the amendment. All those in favor? Any opposed? No. Great. So now we have a new motion on the floor, which is to divide, or do we need a separate new motion? No, you have the original motion with that language struck. Okay. Out of the floor. Thank you. And now, Sarah, you, you had a comment. <laughs> I'm just commenting generally on the proposal rather than the finances, if that's okay. In particular, what people said to us, I wanted to thank everyone who came up and spoke. The carbon footprint, I take very seriously too. And I was back when I was on the council before we did a study also and looked at the possibility of curbside pickup and the transfer station. And it's always been a difficult um, conversation and decision because there are strengths to both. The curbside pickup is quite expensive, and I think that's always been a big strike against it. And on top of that, it seems for some odd reason our residents love going to the transfer station. But what makes me feel a little better about the carbon footprint is there's so many things that you're able to drop off at the transfer station that when I envision each car going to get rid of their brush and then get rid of their 
untreated wood and then figure out a place where they would go for their leaves and then the recycling and, and the swap shop they're driving into Portland to a, a, you know, a charity there and so forth. I feel a little better about the fact that it's one trip where people bring everything they want to get out of their house. Um, and secondly, it does make me anxious when I go to the transfer station now and I sit in a long line to um, carry my trash over because long, traffic jams are bad carbon. Um, but my understanding is with this new plan, it's so much more efficient, there won't be that kind of backup. I mean, the day before Christmas, it was backed up all the way to the street. That, my impression is that will, this will really mitigate that, if not get rid of it altogether, where people can just drive through. And um, if I'm understanding correctly, those, those elderly residents also will not be carting things across. They will, they will just literally step out of their car and throw it in. So a lot of the concerns that I think excellent concerns you raised, I think, are really are addressed in this plan. And the second thing I wanted to say was to thank everyone who volunteers at the um, swap shop. I think you guys are doing an amazing job. You have that place ship shape. It's neat, it's clean, everything in there is something someone else would want. And um, I love it when I bring something in there that you don't want. For example, I tried to bring, I don't know, it was like sheets or quilts and pillows, and you're like, no thanks, we don't want any bed bugs. And, and I had to take it home. So I, I just want to give you a shout out, because it used to be quite chaotic, and now it's really great. So I'm fully in, in support of it. I think this is wonderful, and I wanted to thank the whole committee. Your guys' <laughs> report was really impressive, um, extensive, and filled with information, and I think it's an, a really excellent um, solution that is, as Jessica pointed out, in the big picture, incredibly cost effective, but also I think it'll be very, very effective in doing the job that everyone wants it to. So, kudos. Thank you. Other comments? Yes, no, I guess I would just echo um, some of Sarah's comments in that I wanted to uh, thank the committee um, and all of you on it, um, as well as Jessica. You guys did an excellent job of um, kind of putting together for us a review and a recommendation. I think it is absolutely, you've, you've brought forth the right recommendation, um, specifically because it, I think there's uh, marginally, uh, this will cost marginally more for the taxpayers um, than just fixing what's there. Um, and we have significant um, safety improvements. Um, so I just want to say well done and thank you. Great, anyone else? Yes, Kat. Um, question, when you were looking at this, and I know um, I think about this now, and it maybe resolve itself six months after it's open, but did you take kind of a look at extending the hours, especially as you start um, down this road, you know, and people are trying to learn, and you know how it is. I mean, the way we're doing it now, it took a while for people to learn um, how to do it, but um, like for instance, and I know that we're talking about potentially um, salary and expense, but we're, we're closed right now on Thursdays. And did you look at any, and it, it may be in the report, and I apologize if it's there, but did you look at some kind of an extended hours, maybe even just at the beginning until people are sort of, you know, have the routine and know what they're doing? Yes, we did. And what I'd like to do at this moment and ask Bob Malley to come up and address that. But we did look at um, ex possibly extended hours, ultimately, we decided not to change the current hours, but I'll defer to Bob to. Thank you. Yes, as Jessica said, we did look at that. We looked at the hours, and uh, years back, we used to be open very early. I think it was like 6 o'clock to 2 o'clock on Thursdays. And back a few years ago, the council decided to save some money, and we closed on Thursday. So there are some people that show up occasionally on Thursdays, but as part of the committee discussion, it was a consensus to not uh, extend the hours to Thursday. Thank you. Yes. The only other thing I would add, if I could, on, on uh, sort of a related issue is um, a detail to be worked out further down the road is what the specific transition plan would be, obviously, between the current operation and the new operation, because as with any construction process, we were talking about the library at the start of the meeting, there will obviously need to be some sort of um, uh, transition plan associated with that. It was something we discussed and looked at in terms of having a temporary operation in place uh, to accommodate for that, and, you know, phasing the construction uh, and the work there over, you know, a certain amount of time in order to accommodate that as best as possible. But um, 
you know, it's a, I think it's related to one of the points that you're touching on there. So, thank you. And yeah. if I if I may, um, for Council Ray, it also was not a uh, a strong concern on the part of the citizens who the many citizens who responded to the survey. So, most people were happy with the hours and the money savings. Yes. Yeah, I, I just want to say, you know, I understand that discussion. Uh, but, you know, I, I've also, you know, spent a lot of time reading the report of the senior citizens. And, you know, and, and I looked at, you know, maybe we, we could have looked, you know, I don't think you ever closed the door and to, to looking at different possibilities. You know, I, I look, you, you can't discriminate on the basis of age, but, you know, but maybe we could have, you know, hire someone that comes in four hours on a Thursday and, and or oh, two people that help people with their bags and sort of, you know, do a different type thing. And, and trying to, you know, say, you know, this is the time when we, we want the, the elderly, the less able to come, and we'll give a higher level of service. You know, it, you, know you can't, you, again, you can't kick anyone out, but at the same time, you know, it, there are an awful lot of people who are getting older who are having a difficult time in this town. And I just want to be able to look at outside the box solutions to try to help them. Uh, get along and and you know it, one of the ways I think we could do it is perhaps on a Thursday is have some special hours for uh, people who are who are less able and again you can't legally discriminate but at the same time I think most citizens would know enough to particularly if you ask them if they're able to stay away so anyway I just didn't want to close the door to that completely huh. Great. any other comments or questions did our consultants, who I think are here tonight, did you want to say anything about the plan, or do you have any other comments you'd like to make? No. No, uh, no just here's some two questions. Uh, uh, I don't have to do. okay. appreciate very much work. You know, Randy's being very careful, but you know, I do want to say he did call me within the last week saying that he's a little bit nervous in that, you know, it, it's unusual for a community that goes out to get a vote and is this far along before the final design is done and, you know, that we, we have some contingency. We really, he was a little bit nervous about the whole cost of it. So I just want to make sure that, that he is a professional, that you know that, that he has that concern, although I understand maybe he didn't think it was politic to raise it, but particularly because he, you know, had raised it with me. Uh, but, you know, that concern is up. But the other side of it is, we saw in the library, is people get very upset if we spend money on a project we know is going to be a million dollars before the citizens mm -hmm. have authorized it. So there's, a, there's, no, there's no easy answer to it one way or the other. But I, I did want you to know that, you know, I've looked at the report. I've looked at their con contingencies. I feel fairly comfortable, particularly when you look at a lot of it is equipment-based uh, as opposed to other work that, uh, I think, you know, my hope is we could get it done for this amount of money. And as I said to, to Randy, the, the one piece that still hangs out there for me is the swap shop area and the bottle shed. And, you know, maybe if we have a little extra money in the end, we can rethink how you park around that, how you access it. Maybe that people enter it from the back rather than from the roadway side. You know, there, there are different things that possibly could be done if, if we get into a situation where it actually comes in under budget. And uh, without taking away from the, con the great work of the committee and the concept uh, that still, you know, I think you know, the fact we're continuing to hear about it tonight shows that, you know, it's still an issue that's out there. Okay. Other comments, questions? My thanks to the committee as well. And shall we have a vote? All those in favor of the motion? Any opposed? Thank you. That motion passes. And I need to ask the manager a question. We had something on the agenda on the $600,000 issue for humidity and chlorination system and providing a draft motion for town council consideration at February 8, 2016 town council meeting. My only concern is that that falls off of the agenda if we don't have a way to no. address no. that in, during budget season. No. My sense is the council isn't willing to look at that between now and February 8th. They just didn't want it as part of this motion. Mm -hmm. That was my, mm -hmm. the way I interpreted yes. 
the council vote. Yeah. Let's separate out the two issues. So we don't need to authorize you now to add this in so that we're not... I'm still sense. going to be working on that. You will, okay. Unless no, you tell me not to. No, I... No. Uh, Unless someone We're still going to be working on that. As, you know, like to. And as I indicated, what, what I'd like to do is call Meredith tomorrow okay. and to have her engage with the engineer uh, to get started on... Uh, I'm not sure if she does it right. It's, if it's within a... You know, it's, it's kind of we're in a state of who knows. But uh, no matter what, I'd talk with her try to get that started so we can look at the different alternatives and make sure that this is the best route to go forward. Or that we will have a route for moving forward to address yeah. that particular and we, and we do have money already appropriated for that. For so the engineering. Not, yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, Sarah had a hand up. No, I'm okay. No, okay. you just answered it. Okay. We'll move on. Item number 26-2016, proposed zoning amendment related to a village green. Caitlin, would you like to introduce this item? Sure, thank you. We had an ordinance committee meeting last month to discuss the village green concept in the town center. And we had about an hour and a half long discussion, which covered many topics, including the true purpose behind the ordinance, which is to allow more green space in the town center. Um, Based on the verbiage of the, the title, Village Green, there's a lot of misconceptions that we're trying to make a park in one spot. Um, and while many people think that this was developed for one lot to be developed this way, it actually can go for any lots in the town center along, Old Ocean, I mean along Ocean House Road. Um, and it could be a redeveloped lot. Like if somebody 20 years from now wants to redevelop a lot, they could apply this. Um, after we had voted to send this to town council, um, we had more citizen comment at the end, and they had suggested that um, maybe we look at opening it up to the whole town center instead of limiting it to just Ocean House Road so that <coughs> it truly was the whole green town center concept. And so we didn't re-vote at the ordinance committee level. We just decided to bring the, the whole, you know, what we voted on and that tidbit to the whole council to maybe decide if they wanted to open it up to the whole town center um, district. We also, I want to make sure people are clear that the, the language, another misconception was that this allowed developers to develop bigger and better and, and encroach on wetlands and that is not accurate at all. It, it only allows for the developer to push the development back further away from the, the road for the frontage to be further back so that there is an area for a green. Um, we even discussed trying to find a way to rename it so that it didn't sound like you're just developing one part and we couldn't come up with anything at the ordinance meeting but um, somebody later suggested to me if you just flip the words to a green village. <coughs> um, amendment instead of a village green it's a green village that we're trying to create so that's another thing i wanted to bring to our attention as we set this to a public hearing hopefully thank you <clears throat> so do we have a motion <clears throat> excuse me, for moving this item forward thank you caitlin I just move that we set a public hearing for February 8th. I got the wrong thing in front of me. Um, to discuss the Village Green zoning amendment. Thank you. Is there a second? Thank oh, you, second. Jessica. Any discussion about that? No? All in favor? I, sorry. Oh, I yes. have a question. Um, if we did choose to slightly tweak some language to incorporate what Caitlin was saying, because I did have the feel, I agree with Caitlin, I had the feeling at the meeting that virtually everyone there um, was in support of, of looking at this. Basically everyone was like, wow, this sounds great, because it became clear to us that we were just trying to make it a place where people could, could gather, but in addition to make, who would not want more nice landscaping and greenery in front of a building? And so, if we were to tweak the language in a way that, that allowed this same concept to apply to all the properties in the town center district, the language would have to be altered slightly. For example, you couldn't say it needs to be 100 feet on 77 and it needs to be such and such acreage. It would have to be done by percentages because there might be much smaller lots. So it might be a quarter of all the land would be donated or 
and it may not actually conceivably be on 77. There are a few properties that aren't. My question is this. After the public hearing, to, to slightly alter language, would that need to go back to the um, ordinance committee? Or would, could we do that at the public hearing? Or is it OK to have a public hearing and then change language? I can't remember the rules around that. Jessica, would you like to say something to that? Uh, yeah, I would to the, the <laughs> concept that Sarah's promoting. We did talk about the, the, the concept of this really offers green space and not necessarily one singular village green, but rather green space could happen in any private property that's being sold or redeveloped or what have you. Um, my thought would be, let's just proceed forward with this as is. I mean, this is a you know, new concept. It wasn't without some controversy early on. Um, and then in the future, if uh, the town wanted to expand this concept, this type of you know, amendment to the rest of the towns in a district, maybe revisit it then. Yes. Yeah, I, I just want to try to answer the process question. You know, the, usually when you, when you hold a public hearing, you, you can't substantively change something without another public hearing, and particularly so if it's further inhibiting someone's property rights. I think the amendment that you're discussing, that you, you, you might be offering, or the proposal you might you know, when a motion is made, uh, would not further inhibit property rights. I think it would enable a property to, to be able to do more options, more with their property. So therefore, it, it, it would not require a second public hearing. However, the town council could, if it decided to, decide to hold a public hearing. It could decide to refer it back to the ordinance committee, or it could adopt it with the new language. If a counselor, though, wants to have that new language, my advice always is it is never good to write information on the fly at a meeting. And particularly if someone knows they want to offer such amendment, it would be really good for them to, to engage, in this case, with the planner before the meeting uh, to, to make sure there's language that is ready for the council to, to look at and that could potentially be uh, made available to everyone before the meeting. <coughs> that answers the process question. Yeah, thank you. It's perfect. I mean, I guess the question is, do councilors have enough interest that Caitlin should meet with Maureen or, or would you rather go with Jessica's suggestion, which is do this now and then leaving open the door that possibly other properties later. I'm, I'm completely fine with any. Yes, Caitlin. I would be in favor of meeting with Maureen just so we have all options available at the time. A single counselor could do, you know, what I would do is I would tell Maureen that so such and such a counselor wants it, draft it and check with that counselor because they will probably be offering a, a, a proposal that does that. So. Yeah, I think right. she may say you can't do that, it's too hard or whatever. I mean, I think it's probably pretty simple. Right. I, I don't know. Uh, but I think that would be a step that to me would be helpful because at least it would be on the table for some conversation that we can say yes or no to. Mm -hmm. So what, what if she works with the Ordinance Committee Chair? Is that okay? Yeah, perfect. Okay. So okay. I'll let her know that the council, and she, she'll watch the video of the discussion and uh, we'll let her, you know, I'll suggest you watch the video and she'll get the drift. So. Okay. Good. So we have a motion on the table right now to schedule a public hearing on the Ordinance Committee's recommendation for the February 8th Town Council meeting. We had a second, correct? Did you say yes. That? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other discussion? Yes, Kathy. So I just want to make sure that I understand. We are voting on the recommendation as is right now. Yes. And if, should it change, then we'll have another vote later on as to what the changes are. Because I agree with Michael. Um, you know, doing something on the fly and, uh, I mean, I read all my, my packets so I know what was proposed and to sort of try to figure out what's the new proposal and so mm -hmm. forth is not, doesn't work for me. So I'm happy to vote on as presented tonight and then if we change it later on, you know, with Maureen or the ordinance, uh, the ordinance committee, then that's fine. Okay. My hope would be to have alternative B with the council materials and with, for the public's 
so the public can see it, so whatever. So you'll have the public hearing on this proposal, but everyone will know going to the public hearing that the motion may be alternative B. Right. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other questions? No? All in favor of the motion? Thank you. <clears throat> we will move on to item number 27-2016, consideration of town council goals for 2016. I did want to just thank the manager. Nice job compiling and categorizing all of these. And we have a wonderful display. And I don't know if um, everyone can see them, but on the board over here, we have the um, terrific display of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council goals for 2016. <clears throat> Excuse me. Different format than I think we've seen them in in the past, but I think it's very helpful. So thank you. Thank you to the council and to the public for all of their input on putting this um, package of council goals together for the upcoming year. Uh, do we have a motion to adopt these goals? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Sarah. Any discussion? No? Nothing, really. OK, all in favor? Terrific. Thank you. None opposed. That was easy. We'll keep moving forward. Item number 28-2016, proposed creation of an alternative energy committee. Patty, would you like to introduce that? Yes, I would. Um, nicely that gold is adoptive, so this is right <laughs> following one of our Very council good. goals being uh, addressed right away. Um, so you have before you a uh, proposed um, charge uh, for the creation of an alternative um, energy committee. I'm really excited about this. Um, what I'd like to do is just kind of go through quickly with you and then make a motion and hopefully um, move this forward, open to any uh, discussion. Um, so uh, as I said, I'd like to propose the creation of an alternative energy committee. Uh, the structure would be we have five citizens appointed by the appointments um, committee process. We'd have a committee staffed by the facilities manager, Greg Marles. And because one caveat in this um, structure is that to avoid any conflict of interest and to be, uh, have a clear delineation between public and private interest, um, we, including in this charge that no committee member shall have a personal financial interest in any uh, proposal that comes forth. The purpose of the committee would be to explore opportunities to provide and utilize alternative energy for municipal, um, school buildings and vehicles, to look at using town buildings and land for solar opportunities, and third, to, the committee would pro produce a product that will be a report to the town council providing proposals and cost estimates, including cost savings and implementation costs. Uh, the duration of the committee would be from the time that they were appointed by the appointments committee until December thir uh, 31st, 2016. And then for funding and staff uh, resources needing, um, we asked the town council to make available to the town manager um, $10,000 for technical reviews, costs related to the report, and miscellaneous, miscellaneous committee expenses. Um, as for staff, um, we are looking about 50 hours staff time, this is an estimation, 14 hours of council time for review, and as well, 140 hours of volunteer time. So, um, therefore, if the council feels ready, I'd like to ask for a motion to approve the creation of Cape Elizabeth Alternative Energy Committee with approval of the committee's proposed purpose, charge, and budget. Are you making that motion? I am. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll say. Thank you, Caitlin. Any discussion? Yes, Jamie. <clears throat> um, the only thing I had a question about in reading through the charge uh, was if we want to more tightly define what alternative is. Um, in preparing for the meeting, there, I think, is a fairly wide spectrum uh, within that, where okay. some people view alternative as simply non-fossil fuel, um, but others might consider, as an example, natural gas, which has been um, obviously proliferating more and more through Southern Maine, um, to be an alternative energy source, source to um, traditional number two heating oil. So I, I just think we might want to tighten that up a little bit. Okay. Um, and so whether it's renewable, whether it's um, 
um, non-carbon, whatever we want to call it, non-fossil fuel, something like that. Um, might not roll off the tongue like alternative energy does, but I think would be helpful in, in um, defining it a little bit better. Okay, great suggestion. <clears throat> Do we need to? Yes, please. Yeah, having drafted this in, in discussions with Councilor Grennan, the intent was to keep it open and broad. Uh, we had an earlier alternative energy committee, and, and, you know, and they did look at solar. They looked at bringing natural gas, for instance, to the center of town and ho hopefully to Brentwood and, and other places. And the intent in this draft was not to tie the hands at the beginning of the process as to what they might look at. Jessica. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I had a couple ideas. Um, I think this is very timely that we're looking at this again, and I commend Councilor Grennan for spearheading this. And I've, I've been following South Portland a little bit. They've been looking at this for about a year. Um, one, a suggestion I have is under committee purpose is to add a couple statements. Because one thing that occurred to me, and I, I wrote up some language. I can just okay. was kind of looking at this this afternoon, is that we might want to add that the, the committee look not only at uh, projected cost impacts and savings, but also projected costs of energy going forward. So it's possible, for example, that the energy, conventional energy, energy costs may not be increasing significantly enough to, to make something alternative viable and that we also ought to have a risk section so that, for example, um, uh, the town is not uh, adversely affected financially at the end of a 10-year proposal or whatever. I just think that there needs to just be a little bit more stated that we, we look at. And I, I, I've got, I was just doing this this afternoon and I'll pass out the, what I had Lot of the language. Yes, I do. Oh, yes. There's, there's one for everybody. Here, there's another one. Um, and what if I, if I may, I'll read it. So to add to the last sentence in committee purpose, uh, you have any proposal with cost impacts shall include the cost to implement as well as projected cost savings. And then I, I'm suggesting adding future energy cost projections based on future projections of electricity, oil, and propane prices, and a risks section which identifies and quantifies all risks associated with the use, lease, rental, or financing of a system, including operation, performance, maintenance, guarantees, indemnities, taxes and changes to tax law, net metering. Because some of the, these uh, power purchase programs are you know, pretty comprehensive, and so you just want to, I just thought that the committee, if they're, this is very, very nicely organized. If they're going to look at all that, they probably, I would recommend looking at those other issues as well. Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay. I mean, I think that that's a reasonable mm -hmm. request. So, offering an amendment. Yes. Are you offering an amendment to Patty's motion? Yes. <laughs> and I am. I, 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 to me, I think it makes sense to have it, it part of any cost-benefit analysis. I think all these components would be included nationally. I think stating them straight out makes um, sense. Mike, are you okay with everything that's included there, knowing that you've yeah. worked on the last energy committee and? Yeah, you know, I, yeah, I had I hadn't seen this beforehand. No, I, I just the, the only one that worries me is changes to tax law because you know I, who knows, you know. Well, my thought with we, that is... We don't is, hire lobbyists, so... True, yeah. but my thought with that is, is if there might be a way, you know, to indemnify ourselves if there is something adverse that happens or if okay. the government retroactively decides, oh, well, there were tax credits, because mm. the tax credits that these companies are talking about, it's not a tax credit to us, because municipalities, we don't pay taxes mm -hmm. to the federal government. It's mm -hmm. to private companies. And so mm -hmm. the concept is to make sure that we are not left holding the bag in 10 years for something like that that could be retroactively enacted by. Yeah. That's all. So I, I think looking at the very first, again, have not having seen this, right. that is a reference to the, to indemnify us against those charges. That's right. Okay. I yeah. get it. Okay. So, <clears throat> yeah, Sarah. Um, I'm just wondering if 
um, because we're purposely keeping this vague, for example, or not vague, I'm sorry, but broad umbrella, because as I read, I was like, are they going to look at vehicles, you know, town buses, and is this going to include education of citizens, and, you know, don't idle your motor? And then I realized there was, the purpose of it was not to do that, because the committee itself, we're trying to give as much authority to the committee as we can to pick out, you know, the, the, the most impactful decision making. So I'm wondering if we should keep this equally not too specific, and does it encapsulate, Jessica, everything you want to say by saying any proposals with cost impact shall include the cost to implement as well as projected cost savings, um, such as future energy cost projections, um, risks. I, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to edit oh. on the fly. But do you know what I mean? This is super specific and this is super general. So, it, so I think in the committee might be like, shoot, uh oh. Mm. I wonder. Like, I totally agree with your concept, but yep. should it be um, yep. edited down so it's equally? Because I feel like the committee is going to be in charge of sort of figuring out. But they should be guided to know that we don't want to just have alternative energy that costs a lot. Right. Chairman Cosman, right. just as a point of order, yes, I think that Jessica put forth an amendment to the motion that was on the floor. Right. I don't think I heard a second to that. We and we're I have an asked discussion for, on correct. it. Correct. So I, I just wanted to for a second. try and bring us back around to. So I think when I looked at you, you were in favor of amending your motion with this language. Mm -hmm. And am I correct? Was it you who seconded the original motion? Oh, it was Caitlin who seconded. Okay. So at this point, we have you accepting a change to the original motion. So would you like me to make an amendment? Did I make, I'd like to amend my motion, or do we do this to include this language? I need to do that. Yes. Okay. Can we add, like, okay, so how about if I'd like to make an amendment to accept um, this motion, that um, amendment that Jessica has put forth with the add that Sarah just put in, with just the word such only as? One, right, only one amendment. Only one amendment. Which is the right this. Right. Which is this as as it exists. Oh, as it exists. Okay. We already, I didn't realize that we'd already started this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Here too. <laughs> Did you make the you amendment? Made the, an initial motion and you have <laughs> made the amendment. Made I got it. Yes. Amendment. Sorry. And so you need to either accept I, okay, I will accept that. This amendment, mm -hmm. yes. In which case now we need an okay on the so second. I don't accept it as we're really stretching my, my I don't think capabilities here. You don't Molly, want to. I'll second it. And anyone, then we can can, anyone can move to amend it and move to second it. It doesn't need to be the original movers. Oh, okay. So we didn't. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> right after all of that. Uh, okay, so at this point, we have your amendment. We have. Sarah, you said you would it second. So we can have a conversation about it. Thank you. Yes, that's very helpful. <laughs> Okay. And then my conversation is simply, should we add something like such as, or should we, I, I mean, I think this is fine. I'm just saying it's super specific and this is general. And as a committee member, I might be freaked out by it. Yeah. You know, I, I think what Sarah is getting at is like wood pellets, for instance. Yes. Or I was yeah. thinking wood. I don't know. I'm thinking wind. I'm not suggesting that we put a windmill on top of town hall, but if someone suggested that, that should be included in this. I, I think what Jamie Garvin was suggesting was that if we had broader language or uh, more inclusive language, that it might be more helpful. Comment? Yes? Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Anyone who? Yes, Jessica? Yeah. For to answer, uh, to respond to Sarah's concerns, what, what I'm proposing is fairly specific because this is a committee purpose charge. We need to vote on Jessica's amendment. Go ahead. But we are no. still discussing. Uh, yeah. Yes. No, no, okay. no. What I'm proposing is, is fairly specific because this is part of the committee's charge. So what I'm, by making my, proposal amendment. I'm hoping that the committee will then make sure, because it I hopefully would be in print in the charge, that a proposal, because you're, you're, the committee will be talking to companies and getting proposals on power purchase, as I understand it. 
So that, that they will be sure to get those types of projections as well as what they're asking, because they're not asking for, for these right now unless we add this amendment. That's all. Right. Yes, Caitlin. And so I, I think I agree with Sarah that the, the broad versus detailed, I think just adding the such as makes it go from mandatory to these are some of the things we'd also like you to look at and include as many as you can, but they're not required X, Y, and Z. And so that's why I think just adding this, this such as helps keep the whole thing broad, broad, but with the detail included. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> just so I'm clear on process. So if we at this point take a vote on Jessica's amendment, we can either amend the amendment or we can vote against this amendment but vote to amend this with the such as language. Is that correct? Yes? So does... Those are both an, options, okay. yes. So we could have an amendment to this amended language. We, we generally don't have amendments to amendments. We would have the amendment down and then make a new amendment. Okay. Yeah. Or you can approve this and then propose another amendment. Right. Further change language. Right. Or okay. you can turn this yes. one down. Those are the two options. Okay. So I would like to take a vote at this point on this amended language. All in favor? Those opposed? Okay, so now this... This is the operative This point. is correct. Okay. So, yes, Caitlin. So now that this is the full uh, motion on the table, yes. I would like to offer an amendment to add in the language such as in the front of future energy cost projections. Okay. I'll second that. Could, Thank you. Could, yes. could I clarify? Yeah. The, the amendment is based on future projections of prices such as for electricity, oil, and propane. Is that the amendment? Yeah, what exactly is the amendment? No. Based on future projection mm -hmm. of prices such as for electricity, oil, and propane. No, I think no. it's no. any uh, proposal with cost impact shall include the cost to implement as well as projected cost savings, such as. Correct. So right here, halfway through the paragraph. Right where, right where the underline. Before the underline. Right here before the word future energy oh. cost projections. Okay, that really changes it. Okay. Yes. That's okay, so Caitlin, we have your proposed amendment mm -hmm. now. And we had a second. Was that you, Patty? Mm -hmm. Yes. I need it to be clarified. I don't understand what her <laughs> proposal is. She wants to put such as right here. So it says, as well as projected cost savings, such as, and then Jessica's language. So it, this is more like examples of things they should look at rather than they have to do exactly. OK. Thank She's you. She's just trying to. Right. So the only, we're well, only the such as. such as, the word such as is yes. going in before the future energy costs. Correct. Yes. That's the only amendment we're talking about, correct, Galen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, Jessica. Well, if you put in the word such as, it seems to me you're making those two sections equivalent, and they're not. Because a savings is not necessarily a future cost projection on price. The whole point of having future cost projections on price is to find out what they are. They may not be the savings. That's all. I mean, it, 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 it's a, it completely changes it, and it's, they're not equivalent. So I, I you know, well, anyway. The savings, Yes, Sarah. Mm -hmm. We're trying to draft language on the fly. Like that's just true. pointed out we should not be doing, so maybe we should turf this to a workshop. But it seems to me that this, underlying language gets away from the spirit of this proposal in that we're trying to open this up for them to be creative and look at alternative energies. Not really, my, I didn't think it was really electricity, oil, and propane, but rather uh, wind, solar, um, things that haven't been invented, whatever. So I'm not sure why we're wrapping this back in in such a specific way. Like, why do we want projected prices on this when I thought they were going to be focusing on not on this? Because you're worried about cost long term. Yes, May go I, ahead. Yeah, no, you're right, Sarah. All, all this is saying is if you're going to 
I mean, I'm all for looking at alternative energy. It's just saying, for example, if you want to look at solar, and you're, if a company is going to propose a power purchase program, mm -hmm. and you're going to look at solar, and it's going to give you projections of what you could save in the next 10 years, on what do you base those projections? You must at that also say, well, these are the projected costs of the current electricity yeah. costs you have, yeah. or, or the uh, propane or the oil. I'm not saying you have to keep electricity, propane, or oil, but those, I think we have propane, I know we have electricity and, and oil, heating oil, in, with school and municipal buildings. It's only saying, make sure that you compare those against the projected cost of what you already have. It's not limiting mm -hmm. what you're looking at as far as alternative. You can, it's not limiting that at all. It's only saying, it's only being a little more specific language to say, show us, you know, the savings by show us, showing us what the projections are, prices you will be paying should you do nothing. That's all. Sure, should we just, should we say it that way as well? On the current, <laughs> on our, on the current, I mean, I, I think it's pretty straightforward, yeah. but it doesn't I seem mean, implied that if they said, okay, yeah. solar will be this, it'll be that, but I see what you're saying. If you, you're just saying you don't want it. You want any report to include project. It's very hard to project what, what energy is going to cost, but compare it against what we have now and what people are speculating it's going to be as opposed right. to what this wind and solar would be. Oh, right. right. If, if they're going to project, here are the, your, the costs of solar or the costs of wind then you certainly want to be able to say, and here are the costs of electricity in the next 10 years, as you are currently paying yeah. for it, yes. or receiving it, or eating oil, that's, that's all. What are you benchmarking? <clears throat> yeah, exactly, how are you benchmarking it? That's all it says. It's so benchmarking. That's all, it's, that's all that means, and then the other piece of that is a risk statement. That's all. It doesn't limit any, anything the committee wants to explore in any way. Do you want me to take back my amendment? <laughs> <laughs> so the manager and I were just talking about um, whether we revised that section completely to eliminate the words, if you can follow me. We start with future energy cost projections, the first four underlined words. That stays. That stays. And then we remove based on future projections of electricity, oil, and propane prices. So we would end up with future energy cost projections and a risks section which identifies and quantifies all risks associated, et cetera. And, and, and with the thinking of that is, is that the future energy cost projections have to be based on future projections of prices. Right. We're just not listing for, 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 for what commodities. For which sources. Yeah, which sources. Well, would it be, may I? Yes, Sorry. please. Would you, just so that everything that the town is currently using is verified, maybe against all current energy systems or uh, sources the town currently uses. I mean, I you know, I mean, I know, I know you 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 may feel that's assumed, but when committees get going with their charges, sometimes they you know they can be very literal to the charge, and if it doesn't say benchmark it against what we currently have, that's all. But if you think they will, I, I don't know how they could not start okay. with the right. with benchmarking what we have. from the current. But yes. yeah. everyone's going to, to, going to want to know how is this different than what we're paying now. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. and if, yes, Caitlin. And if they submit the report and it doesn't have it in it, you can simply send it back and ask. And for ask it. them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So right now we have, I think, an amendment. On I retracted my. No one's oh, oh, do you want me to make this new amendment? That, or you've now made a new amendment? Uh, no, I haven't technically made. Can I even make an amendment? Yeah. Anyone can make Anyone. an amendment. Oh, You're a member of the council. Oh, all right. Okay. So I believe we have Caitlin's motion on the floor right now, correct? And if I make an amendment that we revise this wording to take out the words based on future projections of electricity, oil, and propane prices. Is there a second for that? I think we oh, need we to, need to, deal to with vote Caitlin's yours motion first. first. Yeah. 
Okay. Oops, you're almost there. Uh, thank Hang you. In. <laughs> Hang in. We're there. We're in there. <laughs> All right. All in favor of Caitlin's motion, which was to such add as. the word oh, such as. Gotcha. Thank you. All opposed? Okay. That motion does not pass. And now we're back. At this point, we are still dealing with Jessica's originally proposed amended language, correct? Right. Okay. So you make you want me to mention what this is so everyone knows, and then if someone wishes to move it, they can? Yes. You take what she handed out, and is now what's on the floor, and you would simply delete the words based on future projections of electricity, oil, and propane prices. In other words, it would still have future, future energy cost projections in a risk section which identifies and quantifies all risk, et cetera. So would it, the such as, by removing the specific things that such as is going to apply for, you, you just not, it, it right. makes it the broad that I think you wanted. Okay, so I'm going to propose an amendment to the amendment. Just a moment. accept that language. Yes. I'd like to propose the amendment to Jessica's amendment which deletes the words based on future projections of electricity, oil, and protein prices and otherwise accept her amendment as it stands. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Now, any more discussion? <laughs> I know. I, I'm with you. All in favor? Any opposed? No. Thank you. I will. I will. There you go. <laughs> that was a crash course right. in I, Thank you, I, Jessica. <laughs> And so now we will, um, before we move on, I, I did just want to um, ask Kathy, uh, one of your goals, as I remember, and it's under, I think, um, budget and finance, yes. is that we utilize a business model to review goals, including looking at their costs, both direct and indirect, and how costs will be paid for. And I, I just wanted to mention that because I think for the first time we've seen that particular goal applied in one of our motions on the table tonight. I wanted to ask you if, if this, particularly the summary section at the very bottom, um, addresses your particular concerns, and then I do think that summary section, now I mean, what we just talked about? Addresses that as well. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wonderful. So that's what the kind right, of that, that information was the concept you're is, for. yeah, to try to look at costs and um, benefits. So, you know. Income and expenses. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Good. Any okay. other uh, um, comments, questions on that, just because it is one of our town council goals for the upcoming year? No? Okay. We will move on. Item number 29-2016, the process for town council's review and a public vote on the school board's recommended budget. Michael, would you give us a little background on this? Yeah, I did work with the finance chair on this. One of the council goals that you adopted this evening is to clarify the town council's roles in reviewing the school budget. I looked at the state law, looked at the charter, came up with a document for, for you to, to look at in, at your January 7th workshop, uh, and then to, there's discussion of having a future workshop with the, council, with the school board, and then you can, depending on what you, you have a consensus on, decide whether or not to go forward with discussing it with them at the future workshop. Wonderful. Thank you. So we are looking for a motion. Uh, it's proposed to refer to a council workshop January 7th. So, Thank you, Kathy. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Thank you, Patty. Any discussion? Thank you. Yes. I just want to thank Mike for um, putting this all down and <clears throat> putting it together because it's in different places, as we all know. It's here, it's there, it's everywhere. And so this is a nice um, document that's all together. And you know, presumably, we'll talk about it and so forth and may make some changes or suggestions. But I think it's nice to have it so that if people are um, confused about what the process is, we've got something that we can say, you know, we can tell you what it is. In fact, I would even. We'll talk about it later, but I would even say maybe we even put it on the website somewhere. So that, um, you know, last year there were some folks that seemed to be confused about what the process was. And it hasn't changed, but um, it's nice to be able to set it forward and say, if you're confused or you don't understand, here's a document, read it, 
and then get back to us if you have concerns or whatever or so forth. So I just want to thank Mike for putting that together because it was nice to just pull it in from all the different pieces and, you know, things like the number of days and when it has to be done and how it has to be, you know, set forth by Deborah and so forth. So thank you. Good. Any other comments, questions? All in favor? That motion passes unanimously. We will move on to item number 30, recommendations from the town manager. Mike, would you like to introduce this one as well? Yeah, th th this again relates uh, to three different council goals. One is to look at the administration of the community services mm -hmm. program. Second is to deal with the recommendations from the senior citizen advisory committee. And third is the reuse of, of uh, what's about to be the former library building. Mm -hmm. And to try to get this off the dime, for lack of a better term, uh, came, I developed really three recommendations uh, it, regarding the community services program that it be transitioned to a municipal department and uh, I've had uh, the superintendent agrees that would be a good move. In fact, we had a meeting early today. She indicated they're the only school department in the state that oversees something like a community services mm -hmm. program mm -hmm. in every other community they're municipally uh, responsible. But I think it really gives us a really good opportunity to, to uh, help communicate the excellent work the community services is already doing, uh, to uh, look at doing even more for all populations in the community, and you know, to do it in a, in a way that I, I think everyone involved in community services, the current advisory commission members who would be continuing, the, uh, the staff, uh, and you know, and I just think everyone will feel a lot more more excited about community services, its potential in the community, and uh, I think the finances will be a lot easier for folks to understand if it's in the municipal budget. It eases the budget review, and it also takes, you know, right now we have this. Well, who's really supposed to review the budget? Is it the council? Is it the is it the school board? This this clarifies that, makes sure that you know priority priorities that I looked at. So I'm excited about that recommendation and uh, look forward to your discussion on it if you do refer it to the workshop. Secondly, the Senior Citizen Advisory Committee had a lot of recommendations. I'm not going to go over them all individually, but you know, it, it, it's a, they have some, there's some excellent recommendations, but I, I think the, the earlier proposal of community services really gives a home for accountability to help move those recommendations forward. Uh, it mm -hmm. clearly sets the responsibility with community services, particularly with the budget process coming up. It gives us an opportunity to look at some of the specific recommendations this year in reference to uh, having a senior citizen navigator in particular, further enhancing senior programs. And it, it gives us, you know, in the recommendation, a little bit more time and to study the van proposal uh, and to look at that and, you know, and to, you know, look at, uh, you know, the, the different newsletter informational things that, that were proposed. It also follows the concept that, you know, while we do need to enhance senior citizen programs, community services is, is really an opportunity for, for all to participate. Uh, you know, there, there was, you know, that seniors don't, most 55 plus don't want to be in a program labeled for seniors. Uh, you know, they want to be in the mix of the community. And uh, for some of us in that category, uh, you know, it, 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 it's just an opportunity to, to look at it. And I think, you know, the Community Services Advisory Commission, uh, you know, it really gives them a new focus and a new opportunity to, uh, to enhance the seniors. I recommended there be a panel that, that Russell would meet with on a quarterly basis, specifically of seniors, to, to have a, you know, not a big formal committee, but a focus group. You know, how are we doing? Uh, what could we be doing? Uh, what's better? Does, you know, if you look at the seniors report, there was a proposal to have a senior hall, a place where seniors could go. But it, they also recommended it be on a pilot. So then there was talk about maybe putting it into the old library. And to me, if we're gonna pilot something, that's not the place for it. It, it. it ought to be in community services. You know, we got a big building down there, I think with a little bit of, uh, you know, people putting their heads together. We can find a way to do that so that we have space that, you know, seniors can have available to them, but maybe in the evening when seniors don't like to go out and drive, uh, you know, that that still is available for other community uses and, 
uh, activities. Uh, and, and then finally, the, the, the recommendations look at the proposed reuse of what's to be the former library building. And we all know the survey came forward that recommended public use, and there was a particularly intriguing proposal from the school department on some, something they were calling a school hub. But looking at it, it was just left with a, you know, really what is this? And, you know, rather than spend a whole workshop digging out, you know, all of the really what is this, what's it going to cost, how's it going to be run, and whatever. I know Meredith, uh, superintendent of schools, has some, you know, interesting ideas for it. But the proposal is to have a committee of two counselors and two uh, school board members that would study it a lot more in depth and, uh, you know, come back to both the council and school board saying, yeah, we, we think this should happen. This is, this is the details of how it would work, how it would be paid for, how it would be funded. Etc. And again, in our meeting earlier today, uh, Elizabeth Cifres, mm, Cifres, Cifres, thank you, uh, who is the school board chair designate, hasn't been officially elected apparently yet, right. Next uh, week, did indicate that uh, she thought it was, uh, she thought, not speaking for the whole board, that it was something they would definitely want to engage on. And uh, she was already looking to see if they had two volunteers to serve. So that, that was a we had a positive discussion on all of these issues with them. I don't know if you want to add anything based on an earlier meeting. I, I don't say. accept to say that I agree. I think there was a very positive response to that and a fair amount of enthusiasm. And unless you have something else to no, add, I, you, I would say you have the workshop on the 7th. We have notified the members of the Seniors Citizens Advisory Committee. And I, I do plan to try to meet with Russell. I haven't talked to him yet uh, tomorrow to talk more about uh, the first proposal. So we're looking for a motion to move this to workshop for January 7th. Do I so have a motion, moved. thank you, Kathy. Is there a second? I'll second it. She said so move, so I'll second okay. it. Thank you, so that was Patty who made okay. the motion. Good. All right, any further discussion? Any other questions for, yes? For Just a question, are we, are we loading up our January 7th meeting pretty heavy or do you anticipate that this will be moving along quickly? I guess um, the question might be for Mike or no, you. Have you seen the agenda? I well, I'm just looking at these three things and then there's one, uh, the archery item. Um, so I'm just wondering. I'm anticipating the other couple of items there are relatively quick. Mm -hmm. um, this one I can see taking a little bit more of our time on Thursday night because I think we're ending up with three items that are getting rolled all together into one. Okay. Do you feel differently, Mike? Any comments on that? I, I, think, I think the council just adopted a lot of goals. and It's good to have a workshop where you really start working on them and uh, get excited about working on all the different topics. I think, I, think there's, uh, I think the council can move through most of it uh, with uh, good focus and with, with good opportunities of public comment. And uh, I think it'll be one of the more interesting meetings of the year. Mm -hmm. Great. Any other comments? Questions? No? All in favor of sending this to workshop for Thursday night? That motion passes unanimously. Thank you. And item number 31, archery hunting in Cape Elizabeth. Sarah, would you like to introduce that item? Um, this was one of my goals. Um, as a response to many citizens' comments complaints, questions. I feel like there's a, a good deal of uncertainty about what the actual rules around hunting are. State rules, local, where it can happen, what kind of weapons are allowed to be used, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I just thought it would be in everyone's best interest to clarify that. Um, I'll come to the workshop on Thursday with some information. I've spoken to someone at the IFW and I have some suggestions which you guys can we can mull over. Hopefully, it will go quickly, and we can either decide right then, or if need be, continue the conversation. So I move that we refer refer a discussion of archery hunting in Cape Elizabeth to our town council workshop on January seventh. Thank you. Is there a second? Sure, I'll second. Thank you, Patty. Any discussion about that? No. All in favor? Any opposed? No? 
Thank you. And we will move on to citizen opportunity for discussion of items not on the agenda. Seeing that there is no one here, we will move on from that. Um, at this point, the Town Council will briefly recess to have a meeting of the Board of Directors of the Museum at Portland Headlight for its annual election of officers and to confirm participation in the MMA Property and Casualty Risk Pool. And remind me, do I need a motion for us to go no, to recess? No, just informal recess. Okay, and we will have call a recess anyway. Oh, perfect. We will have a brief re recess and we will now be opening the meeting for the museum at Portland Headlight, uh, January 4th, 2016. We have all directors present tonight. Item number one on that agenda, agenda is the annual election of officers. Do I have a motion for the proposed slate? I move that we accept the proposed slate of um, officers for the museum at Portland Headlight. Thank you. Is there a second for that? Thank you, Caitlin. Any discussion about that? No, do I need to read the slate? Yeah. Uh, the proposed slate is Martha McCausland, President, Catherine Ray as Vice President, Jean Gross, Secretary, Deborah Lane, Assistant Secretary and Assistant Treasurer, and Michael McGovern, Treasurer. That is our proposed slate. We have a motion on the table and a second. Any other discussion about that? No? All in favor? Any opposed? No? Thank you. We will move on to item number two, the results of the annual audit. I'll be looking for a motion to accept the results of the annual audit. Um, I'll give people an opportunity to ask any questions they have about it as well. Is there a motion? Just by way of effort, the, the board of directors did have a meeting with the auditors uh, with, when the council met with the auditors uh, and received the, the audit, the, it was the earlier council, uh, received the financial statements of which the museum in Portland Headlight was included. Do I need to read this? No. No? Okay. It's just a good business practice for any corporate body to acknowledge that they did receive the audit and, uh, and accept we're in it. It's, good standing. Uh, when we fill out the 990, that's one of the questions they ask is, did the board have a, receive the audit? You did. Uh, you, know, you did it with your council hat on, but you did, uh, at least five of you uh, were at that meeting. I don't remember yeah. if Jamie or Sarah were there. But, uh, we, yeah. Okay. Do I have a motion to accept the results of the annual audit? So moved. Oh, good. Thank you, Patty. A second? A second. Thank you, Jessica. Any discussion or anyone have any questions about the audit or the results of the audit? No? All in favor of accepting those results? Any opposed? No? Thank you. And we will move on to item number three, membership in MMA property and casualty risk pool. I will be looking for a motion to agree to membership in the risk pool and to adopt, adopt excuse me, the draft resolution, and that is that uh, be it resolved by the Board of Directors of the Museum at Portland Headlight as follows, that the museum become a member of the Maine Municipal Association Property and Casualty Pool, and further, that the treasurer be authorized to execute any contract agreement required for membership on behalf of the museum at Portland Headlight and to take whatever other actions may be necessary. Do I have a motion? Thank you. Oh. Thank you, Jessica. I so move. Thank you. Is there a second? Thank you, Kathy. Any discussion about that? No? Just, yes, please. Just, you would, would, don't usually televise the Portland Headlight Board meetings, yep. but in uh, case there's anyone watching. The, the, the reason this is happening is because it, it, it formally all of the property and casualty coverages from Portland Headlight were covered by the risk pool, but it was under the town's policy. Uh, a lawyer looked at this and uh, the auditors looked at it and said we really ought to have, a, because it's a different corporation, separate policies for the, the museum. So same provider, but it's, you're doing it with, as the museum, not as the town. Not through the town. Okay. Thank you. All in favor of that motion? 
Any opposed? No? That passes unanimously. Thank you. And we will close this meeting and return to our regular council meeting. Uh, let's see. Uh, in just a moment, I will ask for a motion to move into executive session for the annual evaluation process. Before we do that, I do want to mention, again, we've had a fair amount of discussion tonight about items coming up, but I do want to mention for the public's sake that we have a workshop meeting coming up on January 7th. There are a number of items on that proposed agenda. <clears throat> Excuse me. There are also several other items that are coming up in the, in, later in the month of January. So I would um, ask that anyone who's interested take a quick look at the town website and look at the council meetings that are proposed for the rest of this month. And with that, I am looking for the motion for the item number 32-2016 that we move into executive session. Do I have a motion? Yes, Kathy. Um, I move that we move, move into executive session in conformance with 1 MRSA subsection 4066A to begin the annual evaluation process for the town manager. Is there a second? Second. Yes, thank you, Sarah. Any discussion? All in favor? None opposed. Thank you. And we will move into executive session in the Jordan Conference Room. Great.